Hey guys, today we're going to talk about some really crappy tools that I've bought in my history and why you shouldn't. And nobody cares about this intro, so... Number 10. There is no number 10. Number 9. So first up, we have these corner clamps, which are absolute garbage. You can get all four of these for the low, low price of $20 Canadian, which I think is about a dollar American. Now here's why they're trash. So let's say I want to assemble this corner with a few screws. I go ahead, get this clamp ready, set in place. And then I've got to turn this little screw here, turn this little screw here. And first of all, these are the most adorable, useless little screw and handle comedy. They're just, they're, they're crap. But I see right here, it didn't really close my joint at all. And now I've got to loosen this one to close it myself, tighten it up again. Oh, this one's out a little bit. Now I've got to loosen this one, move it over a little. These things are just made to a price point, which is, you know, garbage. And here's what you really want to do. Get yourself a clamp, attach it somewhere in the middle, line it up, use your square, and drill from the side. This is my preferred way of doing things. These things can go to hell and die. Number eight. Next up, we have the eight inch Harbor Freight dado stack. Now you might be saying to yourself, well, just because it's from Harbor Freight doesn't mean it's garbage because this lathe behind me is from Harbor Freight and it's great. This stack is terrible for one reason. It's yellow. No, I'm just kidding. Let's go to the chalkboard and I'll show you why. So let's start off drawing on my super professional Mickey Mouse magnetic letters chalkboard here, a board. And I would like to create a dado in the center. Now, unfortunately, this dado set, although it includes all the things to accomplish this, will leave us with a cut that kind of looks like this, where the blades and all the different pieces kind of stack up together to create a very uneven cut. Now, this isn't necessarily a problem because your board will still sit at the highest point and glue in just fine. However, if you're doing something that will require a flat bottom, this is not the set for you. And I think the reason is because the circle in the middle is a bit bigger than the arbor on my saw. So it has free range to slide around in all directions. So all of these blades are at different heights, depending on where you've tightened everything down. That being said, this Dito set is crap. Don't buy it. Number seven. Next, we have a siphon fed paint gun. Now this can be used for lacquers, paints, whatever, but usually in my experience, this thing does require thinning. So if you wanna spray paint, which most of the time I'm spraying paint and not just a clear finish, this really doesn't help you that much. Now, what I found is this Wagner paint gun, this HVLP gun works a million times better. It requires no thinning at all. It is shot the thickest paint I could possibly throw at it, this super thick melamine paint, no problem. So I would stay away from the air compressor, uh, professional type paint guns, and just get an electric unit. These things are a no brainer, super easy to use. Number six. So next up, I wanna talk about my hole saw kits. Now this is the standard $8 on super mega sale hole saw kit that everywhere sells right from China. I'm sure this one's from China too, but it doesn't really matter. This thing is a steaming pile. As you see, all of these bits are very shallow. They can't make it through a two by four and barely three quarter inch material. These things get super dull, super fast, and you've seen me burn my way through a hole on more than one project. So this being under $10, this being the super duper fancy one for $30, this is the way to go. You have to look at it as it's $20 more. It's really not that bad when you consider that these things are going to last you a decent amount of time. These things are super deep, easy to change in and out, come with extra bits. This is really the route you want to go. Stay away from these. Number five. Next up are calipers. Now you guys might not need this all the time, but it does come in handy, especially when you're setting things like dados or the depth of cut on your table saw, things like that. And these are just a cheap set off Amazon. I think they were about $19, but they are accurate. The battery likes to die on them, but whatever, they're accurate. You might remember I had a Mastercraft set for $13. I know a big upgrade, these are $20 but the $13 ones from Canadian Tire sucked so bad, they were completely out of tune. So I was just chasing a problem that didn't exist because I never considered that the tool was wrong. Number four. Next up, we have something that tried to solve a problem, which is having to drill a hole first and then countersinking the hole after. This combination unit has the little collar here to set the right depth for your countersink, as well as the bit to drill the pilot hole. Now, for some reason, these bits are all single fluted and are just insanely dull. Like it doesn't even look like there's an edge on the tip of these. So basically none of these drill a good hole at all. They just kind of like 
burn their way and mash their way into a hole. And I'm not entirely sure why they're tapered. Maybe that helps with screws gripping, whatever. But this single flute design is terrible. And as you can see, this countersink bit just gets completely gummed up all the time and is a super pain in the tuchus. Now, what you want to get is this set. This set has just simply a big hole on a conical shape and you can run this forward or reverse and it cuts awesome. I would highly recommend these if you're doing woodworking to pick up a set of these. Number three. Next up, we have this Mastercraft palm sander. Now this sander just vibrates back and forth and what you do is you clamp on whatever piece of sandpaper to the bottom. Now this is a huge pain and if something is hard to do, you're not gonna use it. What you wanna do is get yourself a random orbit sander with some Velcro on the bottom. These pads you can buy, I think a hundred for about $20 in all the different grits, which is not too bad when you consider the price of regular sandpaper. And you know, not having to cut up the sandpaper and reattach it. This is super quick, super convenient. You're gonna use it all the time. Now I have had three of these random orbit sanders and this Bosch one is my favorite. It was on sale for about 70 bucks. It has a nice kind of spongy bottom so you can do light contours on the exterior and stuff like that. It's not gonna gouge your material. The other units I had basically burned out. They were the Princess Auto brand, they were the Amazon brand, and you know they were the $30 special. Go ahead, get a Bosch unit like this or something similar, an actual name brand. It's not that much more expensive and it will be so much better. Not to mention the filter on this is actually not a completely worthless pile of sh Number two. So before we get to the ultimate pile of crap that I've ever bought, in, I wanted to do kind of an honorable mention with these clamps. Now, I can't say these clamps are completely bad, because I do use them all the time and they were fairly inexpensive. If you can go ahead and buy the Bessie clamps, the Irwins, whatever, with those big rubber pads on the end. And here's the reason, because they don't really have anything besides these hard plastic edges, they really want to dent along the edges. When you're really clamping down on it, it will dent the wood. So I found whenever I need to use these, now I have to use a cull, a piece of wood, something in here to really sponge in the grip this has on the material. Otherwise it will dent it. Now let's get on to the ultimate pile of sh ah. I've ever bought. Number one. The Craig AccuCut track saw that you attach to your own circular saw. What a piece of sh In order to explain to you why the Craig track saw is such a steaming pile, I need to go to my Mickey Mouse chalkboard once again for some fancy drawings. And the reason for this is I got rid of that track saw. It was that bad. Now let me show you why. It has two pieces. The track, it goes up like this, over, down, over, up, over, down, and that's the track. Now that's fine at first glance, but what I notice right away is these are trapezoidal shapes. And the corresponding piece that goes on the saw follows the same shape. Now I am over exaggerating, but there is a considerable amount of slop between the track and these pieces on the plastic piece that attaches to your saw. And because of that, when you go to use the saw on the track, you can wiggle it a full eighth of an inch back and forth and you cannot get a straight cut. I was fortunate enough to list it on Facebook marketplace and sell it to some poor sap. I mean, recoup some of my cost, but that's the reason I don't have this anymore. It just wasn't accurate enough. So the solution I came up to for replacing that Craig track saw was just to make my own track for my old circular saw. This is a $50 Mastercraft saw, nothing special at all. And all I do is just lay it between two straight rails. It has a bottom. I line up my cut. This thing has been great. It probably costs $5 in scrap material and it is ridiculously accurate. As far as I'm concerned, that Craig track saw attachment thing, can die in a fire. Well guys, that does it for this one. Hopefully you've learned a few things about not buying completely crap tools the same way I have. And we'll catch you on the next one.